today's lesson we are going to look at chemistry the topic for today is Le Chatelier's principle this principle is under KC which is chemical equilibrium let us start there is a lesson video where we look at the chemical equilibrium in detail there is another lesson video where you look at factors affecting the chemical equilibrium so in this lesson video we are going to look at what happens to the chemical equilibrium when it is disturbed by one of those three factors so suppose we have element number one it's in gas phase element number two it's also in gas phase they produce it's also in gas phase but this reaction is a reversible reaction and then it has reached equilibrium and then this reaction it's actually exothermic reaction we know that this notation it simply means that our change in enthalpy is negative so when it's negative it's exothermic reaction so we know our three factors that affects chemical equilibrium the first one is pressure the second one is temperature the third one is concentration now according to Le Chatelier's principle when the equilibrium in a closed system is disturbed the system will reinstate a new equilibrium by favoring the reaction that will oppose the disturbance now in simple terms according to Le Chatelier's principle if this is our chemical equilibrium reaction and somehow we disturb the, re the reaction by either tempering with the pressure concentration or the temperature of this chemical reaction this chemical reaction will try to reinstate will try to fix the disturbance so that it reaches the new equilibrium so like Chitler's principle explains how the reaction will actually adjust so that it goes back to chemical equilibrium so the natural state of this reaction should be equilibrium so if we disturb somehow by tampering with the concentration pressure or the temperature the reaction will reinstate or will adjust to the new disturbance so that it reaches the new chemical equilibrium so let us explain this we know that moving from the reactants to the products we are going to say the fourth reaction is favored this is the fourth reaction and then if we use this arrow from the product to the reactants we are going to say the reverse reaction is favored so be familiar with these terms we are going to use them now we are going to explain how those three factors are reinstated when we tamper with the chemical equilibrium let us start with pressure pressure is the most simplest actually not pressure concentration I mean is the most simplest what happens if we increase concentration now we know that concentration is either we can increase one of the two or decrease one of the two or we can increase or remove the products or we can tamper with the products it's either we increase or we decrease so the terms like we add or remove that is how we actually increase or decrease the concentration now in our case let's say we increase the concentration of x2 now you can see that x2 it's on the reactant side which reaction will be favored which reaction whether forward reaction or reverse reaction 
will take place in order to reinstate this chemical equilibrium. Now think of this as this typical example. Let's say we have two barrels or two cups and then somehow they are connected by a tube. And then we have water inside or some certain of liquid. This liquid is actually flowing this direction and also flowing opposite direction. So the liquid is free enough to flow from one barrel to the other one. Let's say this is barrel A, B. Now, in this case, let's say we add more liquid inside the first barrel. We know that the first barrel will increase in terms of the size of the liquid. And then what happens to the second barrel? In order for, for these two barrels to be equal in terms of levels of these liquids, the forward reaction will be favored, meaning that more liquid will flow from the first barrel to the second barrel so that the two barrels will have the same level again. That is what is actually happening here. We increase the concentration of the reactants. Then we know that the concentration, actually the forward reaction will be favored, meaning that the concentration of the product will have to be produced more than before. And then the concentration of the reactants will have to decrease. Same goes to our typical example. When we add, we know that the concentration will go up. And then in order for the levels to be reinstated, concentration on the first barrel must go down, meaning that more liquid must flow from the first barrel to the second barrel. And then the liquid on the second barrel, which is barrel number B or barrel B will increase. That is what is happening here. So which reaction will be favored is the forward reaction. So what happens according to Le Chatelet's principle in this chemical reaction? If we increase the concentration of X2, which reaction will be favored? The forward reaction will be favored. Meaning that the concentration of X2 must be decreased and the concentration of XY must be increased. Then what happens to the concentration of this, since it's also a reactant, it must decrease. So forward reaction will be favored in this case. Now, if we increase the concentration of Y2, still forward reaction will be favored, or forward reaction will be shifted, or it will be shifted to the right. That is the other terms that we use. Now, what happens if we increase the concentration of xy now you can see it for yourself if we increase this same as increasing the concentration in barrel b the reverse reaction will be favored or we can say the equilibrium will shift to the left so concentration it's simple it's straightforward what happens if you remove some of x2 meaning that we are decreasing the concentration of x2 we can see that uh, reverse reaction will be favored. We remove some of Y2, reverse reaction will be favored. We remove some of XY, um, forward reaction will be favored. So that is how we explain the concentration, actually the disturbance of the concentration, how the chemical reaction will reinstate itself when we disturb or when we tamper with the concentration of the chemical equilibrium reaction. Our next factor is pressure. Now pressure we can associate it with volume. We know that when we tamper with the volume, we are actually tampering with the pressure. When we increase the volume, we are, incre we are decreasing the pressure, we decrease the pressure. I mean, when we decrease the volume, we are increasing the pressure. So how do we explain this according to the Chatelier's principle. 
what happens if we increase a pressure or decrease a pressure? We need to understand something. This chemical reaction is occurring in a closed system, meaning that we have a system that is actually closed. Well, yes, we have reactants and products. Don't think of two containers, no. We have reactants producing products, products producing reactants in the same container. When you explain this using water, let's say water is evaporating, you know that water will evaporate, it turns to steam, and then when it reaches the lid of this container, condens condensation will take place, and then droplets of water will fall down. So you can see that this is the forward reaction, and then this is the reverse reaction, condensation and evaporation. This is something similar to this. Or this is one of the examples of chemical equilibrium. So how do we explain pressure? Pressure, we look at the number of molecules from the reactants and the products. In order for you to explain pressure in terms of the Chapter's principle, you need a balanced equation. So this one, you can see that we have one molecule of X2, one molecule of uh, Y2, and then we have two molecules of X, Y. So in this case, we have we have two molecules and two molecules. In this case, it's a bit difficult to explain this. But let us go ahead and explain it either way. Now, what happens if we increase the pressure of this container? Increasing the pressure means that we are decreasing the volume. Let's say if this lead is here, we are going to take it down to this level. We know that we have more pressure. There's pressure inside this container. What happens if we increase pressure? Unfortunately, we cannot increase pressure for reactant only. And we conclude that if we decrease pressure, increase pressure on the reactant, what happens to the chemical equilibrium? It doesn't work like that. Um, the whole reaction will either be increased in terms of pressure or decreased. So let's say we increase pressure. What happens? You should know that the system will shift or will favor the side with less molecules. Like I said, in this case, we have equal molecules. So it's very complicated for us to explain this. But let's say, for example, we had three and then we have two here. We have three molecules, let us put two here. We know that it's not balanced, but for the sake of explaining, let us tamper with our molecules. Let's say we have three, we have two. In this case, in this chemical equilibrium, you should know that if we increase the pressure of this chemical equilibrium reaction, the system will favor the side with less molecules. So we have three, we have two. You can see that the product side is the one which has less molecule, meaning that the forward reaction will be favored. Forward reaction will be favored. And then if we decrease the pressure, you should know that the system will favor the side with more instead of less molecules. So everything is the same, but instead of less molecules, we are going to put more molecules. Meaning that the reverse reaction will be favored. So it will shift towards the side with more molecules. In this case, we have three against two. This side has more molecules compared to this side, so it will shift to the left. I hope you understand. That is how we can explain pressure in terms of the Chatterless principle. Our last one is temperature. Remember I said we 
changing enthalpy for this reaction is less than zero, meaning that it's exothermic reaction. Now temperature, we know that it has to do with the heat of reaction. So with temperature, we are going to be assisted by this. So it's very important to know whether the reaction is exothermic or endothermic reaction. This is what you should know. If the reaction is exothermic reaction, and then we increase the temperature. If it's exothermic reaction, we increase the temperature. By the way, this is forward and reverse reaction. The chemical reaction will shift to the right. Oh no, just to make sure that you, are not, you don't get confused, let us do this. If it's exothermic reaction, let us start with endothermic reaction. If it's endothermic reaction, meaning that the change in enthalpy is greater than zero or is positive, you should know that when we increase the temperature, the system will shift to the right, meaning that forward reaction will be favored. Then when we decrease the temperature, it will shift to the left, meaning that reverse reaction will be favored. Then when we are dealing with exothermic reaction, increasing the temperature, it will shift to the left. You can see it's vice versa. Then when you decrease the temperature, it will shift to the right. So in this case, let us look at this chemical reaction. I almost made a mistake here. Let us understand this concept very well. Since it's exothermic reaction, and then we increase the temperature, this will shift or which reaction will be favored the reverse reaction it will shift to the left because it's exothermic reaction then when you decrease the temperature since it's exothermic reaction it will shift to the right so you just need to take note of this this will guide you whether it's exothermic or exothermic reaction and then once you master that you will be able to see which one will be favored if we temper the temperature another way to explain this temperature concept let's have a look at this now if this is exothermic reaction you should know that the forward reaction in this case it's exothermic Okay, and then the reverse reaction is endothermic. You should understand this. Once you're given this, this refers to the forward reaction. So if the forward reaction is exo and the reverse reaction is endo, understand this. If we increase the temperature, the reaction that will be favored will be the one which is opposite to or let me say, since we are putting more heat for the chemical equilibrium to reach state, it needs to absorb heat. So if we increase the temperature, just know that the endothermic reaction will be favored. That is the reverse reaction in this case. Then if we decrease the temperature, just know that the exothermic reaction will be favored. It doesn't matter which or what kind of reaction, whether it's exo or endo. Just know that when you increase the temperature, endo will be favored. Decrease the temperature, exo will be favored. So in this case, the forward will be favored, or let me say, to the right. Allow me to go through this example quickly. And then this reaction is 
endothermic reaction, meaning that the forward reaction is endo, the reverse reaction is X. So in this case, what happens if we increase the temperature? Just know that the endothermic reaction will be favored. Now we check from this reaction, which one is the endothermic reaction, forward or reverse? You can see that the forward is the endothermic reaction, meaning that the forward reverse, I mean the forward reaction will be favored or it will shift to the right. Then if the temperature decreases, just know that exothermic reaction will be favored. In this case, the, exothem the exothermic reaction is the reverse reaction, which will shift to the left. So this, actually this, will always be like this for all the reactions. Once you identify which one is the forward, which one is the reverse, then it will be simple for you to know whether it will shift to the right or left. Well, that's it for this present video. This is Fahula SJ. Thank you very much.